Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Valentina and this smile only means that I got my green card. I don't think this is a, a something that I've mentioned on this channel before because I don't know. I just, I never had and uh, it's been such a long journey and I wanted to share it with you because I've seen my analytics, I know a lot of my audience is around the world so if I can help anyone with my story, um, that's, that's great. So again, if you're new here, I am from Venezuela, I am currently living in Los Angeles, California. I originally moved in here back in 2016 just to study and I went to an UCLA extension program for a year. I did my OPT year, which stands for Optical Practical Training. It was a great experience. I loved it. I wanted to gain more experience in the social media area and that's why my certificate was on. It was social media marketing and web analysis. I think that was the exact name in case you want to research about that program and I love the experience. It was a great experience. I think I have a few videos talking about this so I will link them below in case you haven't seen them because I want to focus more on the green card process in this video. I can't stop smiling. I am so excited. I'm so happy but we'll get there. Anyways, the company that I did my OPT with offered to sponsor my visa and I was gonna go for an HB1. I think that's the visa I was looking at and at the end that didn't work. I also tried for a talent visa for my YouTube channel. Those things were an option, but at the end, the most convenient thing was trying to get a residency, a green card, so I could legally live in here. I've always been legal here. I was a student first. I've been as a tourist, obviously, multiple times because half my family lives in here. And then I was with the OPT, which also was under my student visa. So I've always had a status in the US and that is something that is very important. Always have a legal status. Otherwise that can make your process very complicated. And at some point I was like, yeah, I definitely want to stay here. I would love to live here. Venezuela, which is where I'm from, is a very difficult country. It's not very safe. The economy is madness. And when I say madness is real madness, like the minimum wage is around seven dollars a month try to picture that and caracas right now which is the capital which is where i'm from is one of the most expensive cities in south america very expensive with a minimum wage that makes no sense and you would ask then how do people live there exactly they don't it's very complicated and it, I, i'm not here to talk about it the thing is i knew i couldn't see a future for myself in venezuela so i started looking for options again this company offers me one of the options which is sponsoring my residency through my job and that's what we did it was a very long process it started almost three years ago i did work with lawyers or my company did work with lawyers and they ask us a lot of questions because my type of process is for people that have very specific skills that they could apply to that work position. And so that's what we did. They asked us a lot of questions, like what I did during my OPT year, why they wanted me, everything, like all the details. We had a few calls with them before getting started with the process. And then they guided us through the process, like step by step. So I definitely recommend having lawyers behind you because it is not an easy process. And yes, the lawyers are expensive. It's probably the most expensive part of the process, but it is completely worth it. And before anyone asks, these costs are covered by the company who is sponsoring your green card. And by 2019, I had like my OPT ended and I had to come back to Venezuela and I did and it was fine. And I was like, I, I know, like, we're waiting to see if everything gets approved, if my papers get approved for me to come back. The pandemic happened and no one was counting on that. And that delayed everything. There was something, some document that was really, really delayed. And uh, it was because immigration offices were not working because of the pandemic, which absolutely made sense. But I was terrified. My boyfriend was here in the US, which made everything even harder because obviously I missed him. We were in a long distance relationship because of this for over a year, so it was not easy. Um, but after everything, I decided to travel to the US once the borders opened just to visit my boyfriend and my family and spend Christmas and the holidays with them back in 2020. 
and uh, one thing led to another. Um, my plan was to come back to Venezuela and a lot of things happened in Venezuela, in the US, with the pandemic, with the papers. I ended up staying, changing my status or applying for that last paper that was applying for your permanent residency. All of this process, you can do it from your own country. It's actually the, the way to do it. But again, a lot of things happen in between steps and this is what ended up happening for me. I remember at that point, they also offered um, TPS for Venezuela and I didn't take that because I was, I was already under this process. I think it was a little risky and I should have done both or like, I mean, I look back and I'm like fine now, but at that point I was like, maybe I should be doing both things in case they don't approve my green card or something. And again, I was feeling re really confident about my process because I knew I was doing everything right, but you never know. You really never know because you're, <sighs> your life is in someone else's hand. It's really scary and it's, it's just, it's a lot of urgent, oh my god, I can't speak anymore. It is a lot of uncertainty. After all that, um, with timing, so I changed my status, or I changed, I sent the petition for my status change at the end of March 2021. Um, they received it by April 2021. And then I got my appointment for my biometrics in June, I think it was June. And then I would check the website all the time. And according to the website, my case was being processed. My timeline was like, okay, I if I get the green card, I'll receive it by the beginning of 2023-ish. So this is very soon. I was not expecting this. So I do my biometrics and I'm at this point just waiting for them to approve my work permit, which I applied to along with my I-485, I think that's the number, to change my status. I also apply for my work permit because at this point, this company that's sponsoring me is like, okay, we want you to start as soon as possible. We want you to start working for us because we actually meet you here. So that's what I was waiting for. And the work permit finally arrived in November and I started working back in December 2021. Then in mid-December, I received my request of evidence or request for evidence for my medical exams. I sent those by the end of January or mid-January, I don't probably mid-January. And I surprisingly received a notice from my lawyer saying that my green card was approved and that happened around 10 days ago. And I can't believe it. It's been such a roller coaster. But really, I think it, it was worth it because now I feel safe, I feel stable, and I'm ready to build a future in a place that I feel safe at and in, that, in a place that I feel comfortable being in. And I'm just really excited. And I cry so much. You can see it on Instagram. You can see my reaction. If you don't follow me there, go see my reaction opening the envelope and everything and seeing my green card for the first time. I just couldn't stop crying and it was so exciting. So if you are in this process, um, I say be patient, you'll get there. I know it's scary. Um, I think the best thing you can do is talk to people that are also going through the same process, either meeting people through social media or if you have friends that have gone through this process or family members, try to talk to them because you will feel less alone. And I feel like a big part of this process is like you feel very lonely because no one can understand your emotions and no one can understand how it feels like to not know what it's gonna happen with your life. I know, I think that was the hardest and more draining part for me. So definitely be patient, you'll get there. I'm with you, I'm sending you the best energies from here so that your green card comes in soon. I'm just telling you how my process was. I'm talking about timing because I know a lot of people are curious about timing on this type of things. So again, everything happened within a year from the moment I changed my status. And before that, it was probably another two years. It's worth it, you know, especially when you're so terrified of going back to your country, when you're so terrified of like not being able to have a life. It's it's worth all the stress and all the fear in order to get to where I'm at right now. And I'm so grateful for the company. I'm so grateful for the lawyers. And I feel like I'm a really, really lucky person. So again, you're not alone. I'm with you. And I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And yeah, I just wanna say thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. Thank you for liking this video, commenting, and hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. 
And that's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.